So the theme for our school this week is the lotus theme, a very quintessential shape. Namaste everyone. Welcome to another episode of On The Mat. Actually, this will be the number 27th episode, which means it'll be, uh, we have just completed our entire curriculum of six months, of 27 weeks. Next week, we will start a new series whereby I will be starting to break down individual poses and give you a deeper understanding of then the shapes that we explore in the curriculum. So in this final week of On The Mat, this is Yen Ling. Yen Ling is a recent addition to our community. Welcome Yen Ling to this community and hope you are enjoying yourself and practicing along with all of us. This is Wendy and this is Charmaine. Wendy and Charmaine are recent graduates from our teacher training course and now they are undergoing their term teaching program, which means now they are conducting classes for our school. So if you are uh, coming to school, remember to look out for them and take their classes and give them some support. So the theme for our school this week is the Lotus theme, a very quintessential shape that requires openness in your hips. We take this basic lotus shape into several expressions from a side plank variation called the Kasyapasana to an arm balance pose, the Urdhva Kukutasana and finally the actual lotus pose itself which is Padmasana. Feel free to incorporate a short grounding sequence at the start and a nice long Shavasana at the end to make this a 60 minute practice. So shall we begin? Let's begin. <laughs> and let's begin today's practice with a gentle stretching of your hips. So first we bring the left knee up as we lead it into a chest in a tuck position. Left leg in a tuck position. Now bring the right foot over the left knee, resting the ankle over the knee. Right ankle, left knee. Good. Please have your hands clasped underneath that left thigh. And holding on to that thigh, inhale to lift your chest and see if you can sit a little bit straighter in this position. And sitting straight gives you a beautiful pelvic tilt which then deepens the stretching of your hips. And you can help to protect that right knee if you wish by flexing or keeping that right foot active. And stay with the breath as you try bringing the body closer in towards your leg. As the body moves inwards, try to send the right knee away from the body in the opposite direction that can help you deepen the stretch that you need in your hips. Now for the last few moments of your practice, mindfully lean back slightly more and find balancing on your sit bones. With the inhale, see if you can lengthen or extend your left leg. Exhale, the foot comes down. Good. Stay with the breath. Inhale, leg up, nice and straight, lifting the kneecap. Strong quad engagement. Exhale as you bring it down, big toe touching the mat. Third one up with the breath. Good. Exhale, come down. Let's do two more. Regulated breathing. Inhale, expansion of the rib cage as you lengthen your left leg. Exhale, the left foot comes down. Last one. Inhale, take your deepest, longest breath. Remember to maintain length in your spine. Engage and hold this position for five. Four, close the distance. Three, keep pushing the right knee away from the body. Two. And one with the left knee down, and sorry, the left foot down, and the right foot down. Switching sides, now cross the left ankle, resting it over the right knee. Beautiful, clasp your hands underneath the thigh. Pull the thigh in close to the chest. Take a breath in and correct any rounding of the back you are experiencing. You are trying to stay on your sit bones here, not on your tailbone. Find as best as you can a forward tilt in the pelvis. As you bring that left shin closer to the chest, you are bringing the left knee away in the opposite direction and that creates the stretch that you need in your left hip. Good, now with your breath, Lean back slightly, find a balancing here, become light on the right foot and inhale right leg straight. Exhale, right foot down. Good, second one, inhale. Exhale, down. 
Third one, inhale and engage your core with a strong lifting of the kneecap. Keep the body close and exhale down. And staying with the breath, inhale, lengthening and extending. Exhale, big toe touching the mat. Last one, inhale and hold this position. Good, closing the distance between belly and thigh, maintaining a beautiful lengthening in your spine. And that will do, release. We bring ourselves forwards now to tabletop. Come to a hands and knees position on the mat. Palms flat, shoulder width distance underneath your shoulders. Knees going underneath your hips. Now continue that pattern of your breathing. Inhale as you arch. Look up as you lift your tailbone. Round your back, exhale, pushing the heart strongly away from the mat and broad, broad shoulders. Inhale, arch your body again, staying connected with the breathing. Exhale, round your back. Good, actively push the heart away from the mat. Inhale, five, four, three, two, and one. Exhale, one, two, three, four, and five. Last one. Inhale, let's take our deepest, longest breath and find the biggest movement in your spine. Good, and we return to tabletop, hands and knees, but this time with a straight spine. Straight spine and hands and knees. Next, extending your right foot back, right leg straight and parallel with the mat. Please bend your right knee, bring the heel in close to the hip. Now send the knee outwards towards the right in a sideways tuck, and gently bring the knee under the body. Inhale, extend the leg back, but keep the knee bent. And exhale, swing to the side and goes under the body. Like this, continue to breathe as you move. Inhale, out. Exhale, in and under. Trying to make big, beautiful circles. Inhale, up and out. Exhale, under and extend back. Last one. One big, beautiful circle. Trace with the right knee. Feel the awakening of the outer hips and glutes. Change direction. Send it out and back. Exhale, goes under and forwards. Second one, out and back. Inhale, come forwards. Third one, with the breath, continuous breathing. And then send it under the body. Fourth one, feel the awakening of those beautiful hip stabilizing muscles and tuck it under. Last one. Good, as you bring both knees down to the mat, Let's take a moment here to arch your spine. Inhale, look up as you lift your tailbone. And then as we exhale, can we lower? That means elbows bending. Come down, knees, chest, chin. Good. Inhale, a baby cobra. So lower the hips down, lengthen the legs back, and lift your heart. Exhale, pushing back to tabletop pose, hands and knees position, and stay with a straight spine as we work now on the opposite leg. Left leg extending back. Inhale. Good, bring the heel into the hip, bending the left knee. Exhale the knee to the left, and it goes under. Inhale, the leg extends back, and then out to the side again. Stay with the breath, come under, back, to the side. Trace big, beautiful circles, back, and to the side. Two more. Find your full range of motion here, staying continuous. Try to make the circles as perfect as possible. And then after you complete five, change direction at your own pace. Find a movement in the left hip. Full range of motion in the body. Once you have completed five, one more mini vinyasa lowering down to Astanga Pranam, followed by a baby cobra. And then with the exhalation, you will arrive at your first downward facing dog. Downward facing dog, exhale. Good. Please now paddle out your feet, left and right, heels and toes, with one knee bent, opposite leg straight, and we switch and switch.
Allow the hip movement sway it side to side like a dog wagging a tail. One shoulder towards the mat at a time. When you're ready, come up and tiptoes, both feet and with the straight legs, lift up your hips. Exhale, bring heels down to the mat. Find your perfect down dog with your gaze now directed at your knees or the navel. Deep long breaths in to find expansion of the rib cage. Deep long breaths out to pull navel inwards and find firmness in lower belly and pelvic floor. Good. Then with the next inhale, come up and tiptoes. Exhale, knees to chest. Look forwards in front of you. Next inhale, step forwards. Left foot, right foot to the front. Take a halfway lift. Beautiful. And do a forward bend. Exhale. Next inhale, rise up, standing position. Give the arms a big, beautiful stretch. Follow with your gaze as you gain length in the body. Exhale, the hands come back down, forward bending all the way down to the mat. And we take a halfway lift. Inhale. Now step your left foot back. Left foot back. Exhale, left knee comes down slowly. Good. Doing a twist from a low lunge shape. Right arm up. Inhale, turn the body to the right. Spreading across the front of your chest. And bring that right arm back even further, reaching towards the left. Good. As you explore this movement, understand to find the movement from the heart and the front line of the body. And avoid too much movement in the right shoulder joint. Avoid the right shoulder then compensating for any tightness in the body. Good. And as you release, now place your right hand on the inside of the right knee and start to push that left knee away from the body. You can roll to the outer arch of the foot as you do so and it gives the ankles a stretch as well. Right hand to the right knee and push away from the body. Good. The hips come down as close to the mat as possible and maybe the right arm fully straightened and finding the openness of the heart as well. Stay here for five, four, three, two, and one. Now turning in to the opposite direction. That means finding your way to a half squatting pose, a retreating warrior pose. Turn to face your left side of the mat. Lift the left heel a left foot. Left toes pointing upwards, left leg straight. You can press the left knee downwards, engaging the quad. Try to be flat on the right foot. If you need to tiptoe, you can take the option of parking a block underneath the heel there to support your half squatting position. Your tailbone is trying to reach the mat, but the crown of the head reaching in the opposite direction. Your hands together and the elbows are helping to push the right knee as far away from the body as you can. Feel the stretch being created here and stay for a few breaths. Good. So your next transition requires a strong right leg. As you extend the arms upwards, push into the right foot to lift your way up to a warrior two shape. Right knee bent, left leg straight. Exhale, then spread the arms. Good. Check in Vira Bhadrasana. Right toes pointed the correct direction. Right knee is stacked above the ankle of the foot. Back heel grounding. There is an equal weight distribution between front and back leg. There is the flow of your regulated breath, and there is the stability of your pose, along with the stability of your gaze. In from a warrior two position, let's do one reverse warrior. Inhale, lengthen the right arm forwards and lift it up and over to the left. Go ahead and slide your left arm down your back leg, deepening the stretch in the side body. Good. And when you're ready, exhale coming down to a side angle pose. Take the option of the elbow to the knee or the hand resting gently on the mat. The top arm is fully extending. As you bring the bicep close to the ear, there is a wrap of the tricep in the top arm. Revolving the body upwards, finding open chest but also open hips. Find a the movement then in one plane. 
Good. And with the left hand to the hip, can you transition your way to a triangle pose today? Left hand goes to the hip, right hand reach the mat or ankle or shin. And then the front leg straighten in one big beautiful breath. And again stay, bringing the chest back in line with the hips. Good. Keep the body revolving upwards. Extending the left arm, follow with your gaze. Creating a stretching of the right inner leg and the left outer hip. One more breath. And that will do as you release, you place both hands now down on the mat as you step back to plank. Step back to your high push-up position. Those of you that have a chaturanga, a low push-up, please go ahead and come down. Elbows hugging close, shoulders not dipping below the elbows. Inhaling to an upward facing dog. Exhaling downward dog with a straight spine. Beautiful practice, beautiful shapes everyone. From down dog, come up and tiptoes, inhale, hips high. Knees to chest, knees bent and looking forwards, exhale. Next inhale, step forwards. Left foot, right foot to the front of the mat. Take a halfway lift. And then forward bending, exhale. Good standing position, inhale, arms up, Urdhva Hastasana, upward salute. Arms come back down, exhale. Beautiful. And now take a halfway lift. Inhale. Please step your right foot back. Right foot all the way back. Right knee all the way down. Twisting towards the left leg. Inhale. Extend your left arm upwards. Good. Find your open chest, open shoulders. Exhale. Bring that left arm further back, back and back. Good. You are reaching up and over towards the right. You are finding a stretch. A beautiful expansion, feeling in the front of your chest as you even explore the body, twisting. You can allow the hips to come forwards even more. Good. And stay for one more breath in this beautiful stretch. Exhale now, place the hand on the inside of the left knee to push the knee away from the body. And create the stretch that you need in that left hip, allowing the ankle to be stretched as well by rolling to the outer arch of the foot. Try to lock that arm out, fully extending. The heart is open in this position. And the hips lower as close to the mat as they are able to go. Very nice. We stay for one more breath. Good. Now twist in the opposite direction to find your half squat. Your retreating warrior pose. Good. Find the grounding of the left heel. Otherwise, you might modify. Lengthen the tailbone downwards. Press down that right leg to keep it fully extending. And actively point your right toes upwards. Elbow against the inner leg to push that leg away from the body. And find a beautiful stretching of the groins. When you're ready, we are going to press ourselves up to the warrior two shape. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, arms down, knees bent. Beautiful. Front knee stacks above the ankle of the foot. Back heel grounding. Even weight distribution between front and back leg means body neither leans to the left nor leans to the right. The spread from fingertip to fingertip, the length from the crown of the head to the base of your spine. Active and exploring this shape. Then from this position, extend that left arm forwards and reach up and over to the right. Resting the right hand lightly on the back leg to find reverse warrior position. Good. Exhale left elbow to the knee or left hand to the mat. Right arm extend forwards to find the side Angle pose, and we stay here for five, four, three, two. Beautiful practice, everyone. On one with the right hand to the hip, look down. Have your left hand in the appropriate position on the mat, ankle, or shin. Front leg straight, and you have made a transition to a triangle pose. Extending the right arm up, 
and following with your gaze. And take a few breaths, establishing the stretch in the left inner leg and the right outer hip. And that will do, place both hands down to the mat and we step back to plank pose again. If you wish, your vinyasa could be a knees, chest, chin. If you have chaturanga, please go ahead and do so. Then the cobra or an upward facing dog, followed by a down dog with a straight spine. Beautiful. And from down dog this time, let's extend the right leg up to three-legged dog position. Beautiful. Please bring the right knee forwards to the chest. As you set the right foot in front of you on the mat, lower the left knee down and let's twist to the right again. Inhale, right arm up and spreading towards the left. Exhale as you bring the right hand down. Now twist back to your half squatting position, your retreating warrior. Turn and twist with your breath. Next, inhale the front leg pressing upwards to find your warrior two shape. Spreading the arms on the exhale. Next inhale is a reverse warrior. Beautiful. And then as you come down to side angle pose again, you are going to take your left arm back in one big beautiful circle to start half binding. Your left arm will reach from behind the body to try to grab your right inside of the leg. As deep as you can to create a stretching of the shoulder. Stay for five. Four, three, two, and one. See what it feels like to straighten your leg while maintaining your half bound position. Good, keeping the chest open and in line with the hips. Stay with your breath. With your left hand, you might explore crawling deeper down into your inner leg, deepening your bind. Beautiful, open hips and open shoulders. Please try not to take too much weight on the right hand. Keep the foundation light. Good. And look downwards now as you bend your right knee. This will be a transition to a half moon balancing pose. Slowly crawl the right hand forwards, one to two feet in front of you, slightly to the right. Lift your back leg up and work on revolving the body. Good. Lifting your gaze only if you feel stable and comfortable doing so. Good. Ending that right hand. You can crawl forwards a little bit more. Perfect. Very nice. Not too much weight on that hand. And that will do. Release gently. Both hands come down. You can unbind. Stepping back or taking a small hop back if you wish. Come to plank and elbows bend for a vinyasa. To downward facing down. Continuous with the breath, left leg extending upwards, inhale, three leg up. Left knee come forwards to the chest, tuck position. With the left foot in front of you, back knee comes down from your low lunge, turn and twist. Left arm comes up and over to the right. Good. Exhale, twist in the opposite direction, turning it into a half squat, a retreating warrior. Inhale, rise up, warrior two shape. Exhale, arms extending, left knee is bent, right leg is straight. Good. Reach forward to the left arm and next inhale takes you to a reverse warrior position. Exhale as you explore your side angle. Again, with the right arm reaching, reaching back behind you in a half binding. The right hand from behind the body, trying to reach the inside of your left leg. Stay with the breath as you explore your side angle from this shape. Good. If the shoulder has given you more space after a few breaths, then go ahead and try to walk the right hand down deeper into your left inner leg. And then see what it feels like to straighten this front leg while maintaining your half binding. Good. And holding for five. Four. Three, two, and one. As you reach the left arm forwards, crawl forwards one to two foot in front of you and slightly to the left. 
as you lift that back leg up and keep the body revolving upwards to find Ardha Chandrasana, the half moon balancing pose, but today in a half binding. Good, stay with the breath, create stability, find the foundation in the four corners of the left foot, lightly on that left hand supporting place. Perfect. Now release as you place both hands, come down to the mat. Your left leg can step back or take a small hop back. Find your plank pose, elbows bent, doing a vinyasa to downward facing dog. Good. From down dog, come up and tiptoes, inhalation. Exhale, knees to chest, look forwards in front of you. Next inhale, walk, jump or float. Find your way forwards to the front, take a halfway lift. Exhale, forward bending. Good, rise up to standing. Give ourselves a big, beautiful stretch upwards and slowly bring the hands down to the heart, coming to Samastitihi, neutral standing pose. From this position, we will now start to balance on our right foot. So let's take a moment here, inhale to lift and spread your toes. The right foot rocks left and right gently to find a foundation in the four corners. And then exhale, all five toes come down, grounding that right foot, finding the activation. Nice and stable in the right leg, then start to lift your left knee up to the chest. As you do so, stay present and ensure that your hips level squared and the pelvis is in a neutral position. Good. With the right hand to the hip, go ahead and reach your big toes with the left hand. Left hand will hold the big toe with the pace fingers and the thumb. And then take your breath in. Exhale like a door, swing that left leg outwards towards the side. And your option, you can practice with the knee bending or you can fully extend the leg. Finding Uthida Hasta Harangustasana, the standing hand to big toe pose. Good, stay with the breath. Strong outer hip on the left leg to pull the leg actively to the left. So not being held or carried by the left arm, but from the strength of the leg itself. Now fold it into a half lotus shape. Bring the heel in, place the heel as close to the belly as you can and drop the left knee downwards to create that half lotus shape. Hold the half lotus with the right hand. Keep the foot as high and lifted as possible. Take your option if you want to with the left arm you will reach back and just like you did earlier half binding. But instead of reaching the inner leg you will now try to reach the big toe of your lotus. Four fingers will wrap around the inside of the foot and the thumb goes in between big toe and second toe. For those of us that are not yet able to do this, then you will, with the right arm, will reach for the left, with the left arm, will reach for the right elbow instead. Good, and then if you have any free arms, gently bring the hands down to the mat, forward bending. Good, as you halfway lift, look up, pull your navel in to give space for that heel to sit deep into the belly. Exhale now, forward bend and try to guide the crown of the head towards your big toe. Stay for five, four, three, two, and one with the right knee bending. Now you will make a transition to a squat. So as you bring the hips down towards the mat, lift the right heel upwards and balance on the ball of the right foot. Strong, strong engagement. Press all five toes down. You can stay with one hand on the mat, but try to make it as lightly supporting as possible. You might be remaining in your half binding. And then if you have your balance today, your hand goes to the heart, finding your toe stand for five, four, three, up, 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 two, and one. That was a beautiful practice. Okay. Good, place both hands down so you are unbinding. You will have your hands in front of you on the mat. From your half lotus shape, you are going to enter an arm balancing pose. Palms flat, shoulder width distance, elbows slightly bent, shoulders are broad. And as you round your back, balancing left knee over left tricep and still in a half lotus. Right knee 
right tricep. Your right foot can be on the mat supporting. But if you feel ready today, you are even going to explore lifting the right foot off the mat to find half lotus crow pose. Ardha Padma Bhakasana. Five, four, three, two, and one. Release gently. Come down the same way we came up. Good. Uncross the legs. And take a moment to rest the body. Okay. Beautiful practice. Let's try again at the front of the mat. And then when you're ready to start again, prepare your left leg. Left toes up and spreading the toes. Rocking left and right, finding the foundation. Four corners of the foot. And then exhale all five toes down. From the foundation of the left leg, you lift the right knee up to the chest and you are balancing. Stay with the gaze directly in front of you. Hips are level squared and your pelvis neutral. You grab the big toe with the peace fingers and thumb of the right hand. You inhale and open the leg outwards like a door. Option to extend the foot or just to keep it tucked. Udhida Hasta Padangustasana. Good. To deepen disengagement, try this as you extend the foot to the right and lift it upwards. You also try to drop the right hip downwards. Good for five, four, three, two, and fold it into your half lotus shape. Bringing the heel to the belly, the ankle will rest as high up the opposite thigh as possible. Support it with the left hand as you reach the right arm back behind you. Grab your left elbow or grab the half lotus foot. Good. Free hand to the heart if you have them. Take a breath, lengthen. Exhale, fold. And if you are folding, holding the elbow, then release your bind so that you can place your hand to the mat. Good. Inhale, look up, lengthen, pull the navel in, give space for that lotus foot. Exhale. Come down with the chin towards the shin, as deep as you can. Try your best to maintain your bind. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Now bend your knee. Take your time to squat down. Lifting the left heel up. Strong, strong engagement in all five toes. You are balancing on the ball of the foot. You can assist with one hand, gently touching the mat. Or if you feel ready today, bring it to the heart. Five, strong lift of the heel. Four, the buttock is floating slightly away from that heel. Three, two, beautiful, beautiful. One, release, both hands come down. Very nice. Lift up your hips and do your half lotus crow pose position. Hasta Bandha, hands are locked to the mat, elbows hugged in, shoulders broad and outwards, body leaning forwards so the elbows stack above your wrists. Staying with the back foot lightly touching the mat or even you lift it upwards today. Good. And release. Set the foot down. Rise back up to standing position. Maybe give the arms a big beautiful stretching upwards. And then exhale as you bring the arms down, feet together on the mat. Good. Let's do one more vinyasa. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, walk, jump or float back. Elbows bent. Arms straight, open chest. Spine straight, heels grounding in downward facing dog. Beautiful. Five breaths now. Inhale, expansion of the chest. Exhale, navel pulling inwards. Inhale, even you lengthen your spine. Exhale, you find your grounding and foundations. Third one, in. Good. And out, staying connected with your breathing. Fourth one, in. And out. Inhale as you come up and tip toes. Exhale, knees to chest, looking forward. Next breath. Come to seated position, hop forwards and sit down. Legs extending in front of you. Dandasana pose. Good. So working from the mat now, 
Find your Agni Stambhasana, which is your fire log pose. You will stack one shin over the other. Start with your left shin. Place the left shin in front of you, parallel to the short side of the mat. Then your right leg. You will stack your right ankle over the knee, and your right knee is over the opposite ankle. Right over left. Perfect. Stay with the breath in flexing the foot here. Might help some of us that feel discomfort in the knee joint. The knee tends to compensate for tightness in the hips. You can also modify this pose to make yourself more comfortable if you maybe increase the distance between the knees so that the foot rests against the calf instead. Okay. And then sitting nice and straight, take the arms upwards on the inhalation. Exhale, lengthen forwards, and we come down as deep as we can in a folding which could mean just placing the hands on the mat in front of you if you feel really, really tight. But if you are open, even perhaps resting the chest over your shins and guiding the crown of the head down to touch the mat. As you stretch, stretch, stretch forwards. Good, maintaining the lengthening of your spine. Five. Four. Three. Two, and one, rising back up, inhale. Continue to bring the arms back behind you, exhale. You will place the hands behind you on the mat. And then lift up your left knee, bring the left foot down to the mat, making the letter M with the body, preparing for a counter stretch. You will stay in a figure four as you explore a reverse tabletop. So inhale, lift up your hips. Keep the chest open, strong shoulders to push and lift and the right knee pressing downwards to increase stretching. Stay with the breath as we hold for five, four, three, two, and one as we release, buttocks come down gently. Good, slide your left foot forward still in a figure four position. Beautiful, so bring that right foot up higher into a full half lotus shape. That means the right heel is trying to kick your belly and the ankle resting on your left thigh. Ensure that it is the ankle resting, not the foot. Reach back with the right arm as if you are twisting and see if you can catch your right foot from behind the body in a half binding. Good. Untwist so that you face your left leg, your straight leg. Take a breath in, left arm up and exhale, reach forward for a forward bend. As you come down, don't leave the right shoulder behind you. Bring down the right shoulder along with the left. Good, and guide the crown of the head breath by breath towards your big toe, which means inhale, create length, and exhale, create the depth of your stretching. The stretching of the shoulder, the right hip, and the left hamstring. One more breath. And that'll do. Inhale as you rise up. Exhale, you will place your left hand behind you on the mat and as if going up to a reverse tabletop again. But we are taking it into Kasyapasana instead. You are going to find a half lotus side plank. So with the left hand behind you on the mat, you can take the option of doing this variation with the knee resting on the mat instead of a straight left leg. Find your way up to Kasyapasana. Second option, you might not want to be binding or you might use a strap like what Wendy is doing to find your bind, which makes it more manageable in the body. And then of course, the third option is if you have pain in that left wrist, you can do this on the left forearm. So find a variation that suits your practice and stay with the breath as we hold for five, four, Three, two, and one, release gently, come down. <laughs> that was beautiful. Okay, wonderful, everyone. Come back to seated position. And fold your legs the opposite way. Find Agni Stambhasana now with the left shin stacked over the right shin. Ankle over knee, knee over ankle, left over right. Agni Stambhasana, fire your love pose. Good. Again, take a moment here. Ensure that your left knee is not hurting. 
you are finding the movement from the hip, minimize lateral movement in the knee with a small flexion of the left ankle. Then take a breath in, arms up, exhale, lengthen forwards. Find your stretch. It could just mean the hands resting on the mat in front of you. Or perhaps you lengthen the body all the way forwards, chest resting over the shins, head resting on the mat, arms lengthening forwards. We stay for five. Four. Three. Two. Inhale, rising back upwards again. Arms up. Circle the arms back. Exhale, the hands come down to the mat behind you. And find your reverse tabletop pose in the figure four position. Inhale, hips up. Chest open with your high hips. Push your knee downwards in the opposite direction of the lift to increase the stretching of that left hip. Stay with strong shoulders. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Buttocks come down slowly without dropping, please. Good. Right leg straight, still in a figure of four. And you will bring that left foot all the way into a half lotus shape, which means the heel trying to kick the belly. The ankle resting on the opposite thigh. And with your left arm, reach back to see if binding can happen today. If it doesn't want to, then that's fine as well. Modify by grabbing onto the pants or the hem of your shirt. Or use a strap. Take a breath in, right arm upwards. Exhale, lengthen the right arm forwards and catch your right foot. Take a breath in. And exhale, guide the crown of the head towards big toe. Good. Half lotus. Half binding. And a hamstring stretching of the right leg for five, four, three, two, and one release. And once again, your challenge is to find a half lotus side plank while still binding. With the right hand behind you on the mat, turn the body to the right. With the right knee on the mat as an option or the right leg straight. Lift up your hips with a strong right arm or the option of coming down to the right forearm. In a half lotus or the option of even doing like a tree pose position. So there are many variations and options that can be explored here. Pick one that suits your practice and continue to follow the sequence. According to what your body needs today. Stay, bring that left knee back, 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 increase the stretching of the hips. We hold for five, four, three, two, and release. Come down slowly, sit down on the mat. Beautiful. Very nice, everyone. Both legs forward. And then you can bounce your knees up and down and rock the legs back and forth releasing tension in your hips. So when you're ready, might as well do a full lotus position. Bring the right leg in first. Good, you make a chicken wing with the right leg by bringing the heel in close to the hip. You revolve that right leg to guide the heel of the foot in towards the belly. You rest the ankle over the opposite thigh and you check to see if you are okay to do a full lotus. As a guide, if you are in a half lotus and you are able to bring the half lotus knee down to touch the mat, then you are okay. Full lotus, you bring the opposite leg up and over as well. Half lotus, you bring the leg under. Or even you might do a cross-legged position. Good. We are going to find yoga nidra. So with the left arm, reach back behind the body and try to catch your left foot. With the right hand, reach back behind the body. Do a gentle back bend as you lean forward, and that can help you to catch as well. If it doesn't happen today, then no worries. Simply grab the opposite elbows with the hand. Take a breath in, look up. Exhale, lengthen forwards and try to touch the chin to the mat. Beautiful. Now breathe. Five. Good, Shami. Four. Three, 
2. And 1, back up again, inhalation. Beautiful, exhale, release, extend your legs. Take a moment, roll them back and forth, bounce the knees up and down. And when it's time, let's fold the legs in again, but this time left leg comes in first. Beautiful, and then crossing the right leg over. Again, if you feel tight, this could just be a half lotus position. Now let's do the opposite. Instead of folding forwards, let's go backwards. Rock the body back carefully and see if you can lift your hips off the mat to find an inverted lotus. Beautiful. Walk the elbows in as close together as possible. Stay supporting the upper back with the hands or if you can find a foundation in the shoulders and there is not too much weight on the head, not too much strain in the neck, then with your hands you will hold your lotus knees and even lock the arms out perfectly straight as you pull the shoulders downwards into the mat to find further grounding and foundations. Good. And one week ago, we were practicing Mati Asana or Fish Pose. This week, perhaps you can find Mati Asana, your Fish Pose, while maintaining Lotus Shape. Let's try. Rock your way down to the mat. Slowly lowering the hips down. With the inhale, the heart lifts. The chin lifts, the throat opens, and touching the crown of the head to the mat behind you. Once you are in your perfect shape, then hold your feet with your hands. Your movement is to actively pull the elbows downwards as if elbows want to touch the mat, but not losing the hold on your feet. And at the same time, the heart lifting upwards in the opposite direction. Open throat. Open heart. Open hips. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one, release gently, lifting the head off the mat and lowering down, uncrossing the legs. Beautiful. Rolling the legs back and forth and bouncing the knees up and down. And then when you're ready, bring both knees into the chest and we are going to roll over and rest on our side and gently raise ourselves up to sit. From our seated position, one last inversion we practice today is a tripod headstand. Okay, as you do a tripod headstand, those of us that are still trying to find a balancing, you can work against the wall. And you can also work with your feet on the mat, not lifting the legs, but just trying to maintain the shape in the upper body, like a downward facing dog on your head, trying to stack your hips. If a headstand is possible, then take your option today to find your way into either a half lotus or a full lotus, another inverted lotus pose. And if a full lotus is possible, perhaps you might want to bring the knees downwards into the armpits and slowly see if you can press your way up to Urdhva Kukutasana, the pose we practiced in last week's intermediate level class. Take your time to discover this. Rounding the back, bring the knees in position. Good. Take your time, Yanling. Push into the fingers. Good. As you rock back, as you start to lift the head up, mindful not to bring the body weight too far back. Look forwards, look forwards, look forwards. Very nice. Arm straight, arm straight, arm straight. For five. Four. Three. Two. Good. Head come back down to the mat again. Oopsie. And slowly lift up your lotus legs. Take your time, no rush. Good. Lift back up to tripod. Take your time. And then any which way you please, lower yourself down slowly, slowly to come down and resting in child's pose position. Keep the head on the mat. That was beautiful. That was amazing. Great job, everyone. Gently, gently give length to your neck by rocking the head slowly side to side. Ensure that the neck feels nice and open and comfortable. Release all tension in neck and inner shoulders. 
So then when you're ready, let's flip over to lie face up on the mat, head forwards, and feet facing the back of the mat. Lying face up as you spread the arms and legs comfortably wide. Toes outwards and heels inwards. Palms facing upwards and the eyes gently closed. Corpse pose or Shavasana, giving rest now to the body. So thank you very much, Charmaine, Wendy, and Yen Ling. And thank you all of you that are watching us as well and following along with our flow. Continue to practice with joy in the body and peace in the heart. Namaste and see you soon.